Gross Domestic Product Report, Part 1. The GDP report measures the output of goods and services produced by labor and property located in the United States. In other words, it measures the total economic production of the economy. If you have not already done so, I invite you to stop this video and watch my overview video on the gross domestic product in the basic economics section. I'll wait here until you come back. Welcome back. The GDP report is released quarterly by the Bureau of Economic Analysis. I'll post a link for the report in the text next to the video. The GDP report is the largest, most comprehensive economic report. While other reports focus in on individual sections, the GDP report looks at the entire economy. Economists use the GDP report to gauge growth in the economy. GDP expands when production increases. The increase in production creates jobs. The increase in jobs increases income. Some of this additional income will be spent increasing corporate income and profit. Some of this additional income will be deposited into banks, which is then loaned out. This in turn causes more increases in production. However, increases in production can also lead to inflation and higher interest rates. GDP contracts when production decreases. When companies produce less, they need less employees. Higher unemployment means people earn less and spend less, causing corporate income and profits to drop. The government, the Fed, and the Treasury use fiscal policy and monetary policy to try and maintain a rate of slow expansion of the GDP, which benefits the country in many ways, including creating jobs. However, they have to keep the GDP from expanding too slow or contracting because it increases unemployment, and they have to keep the GDP from expanding too quickly because it causes inflation. Also, because the labor force in the U.S. is growing, the GDP must expand at a rate of about 3% per year or more, or the unemployment level will increase. The GDP is reported in both current dollars and chain dollars. When the GDP total increases, it is important to know whether the increase came from increased production or from inflation. GDP increases from more goods being produced is usually a good sign for an economy as more goods being produced increases supply and lowers prices. However, GDP increases due to inflation is considered a bad sign for the economy because price increases lower demand. The GDP statistics are reported two ways. The first is current dollars, also known as nominal dollars. The numbers in these sections include increases due to inflation. The second is chain dollars, also known as real dollars. In these sections, the inflation has been removed from the total by using something called a deflator, which is basically a correction factor applied to remove price increases. Real or chain dollars are the statistics most economists look at as this shows the real change in production levels in the country. So the statistics reported in the media use real dollars as well. An important point to mention is that most of the statistics are reported as an annualized number. In other words, the statistics show what the change would be for the whole year if the same amount of change remained consistent all year long. Looking at the report, there is a main table, Table 1, and several follow-up tables. At the beginning of the report is a summary and revisions for previous reports. The data in Table 1 is presented as a percent change from year to year and a percent change from quarter to quarter. Table 1 shows the GDP for the entire country. Table 1 is then broken down into four main categories. Personal consumption expenditures, gross private domestic investment, net exports of goods and services, government expenditures, and gross investment. Let's look at each more closely. Personal consumption expenditures is a fancy name for spending by consumers. This section is the total of all spending by consumers in the U.S. for goods and services and it is about 70% of total GDP. Economists use this section to gauge the level of demand for goods and services in the U.S. When people are spending more, it creates jobs, but it could also lead to inflation and higher interest rates. When people spend less, it could lead to higher unemployment and lower interest rates. This section is further broken down into three more sections, durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. 
Durable goods are goods that typically last more than three years, such as appliances, tires, televisions. When the economy is expanding, this sector tends to expand along with it as people are more willing to buy and or replace longer lasting goods. However, when the economy is doing poorly, some people will put off purchasing or replacing longer lasting goods. Another important point is that these tend to be more expensive goods, so they are often bought on credit. Non-durable goods are goods that last less than three years, for instance, food, clothing, shoes. This section tends to remain more stable during expansions and recessions in the economy. Services make up about 60% of, of consumption, whereas goods only make up about 40%. The U.S. is often called a service economy. The next main category, gross private domestic investment, are investments from businesses. If the economy is doing well, businesses will spend more to invest and expand. However, if the economy is doing poorly, companies tend to spend less on investments. This section is broken down into two subsections, fixed investment and the change in private inventories. Fixed investment has two parts, residential and non-residential. Residential investment is the construction of homes and apartment buildings. Non-residential investment is investment in things like new office buildings, warehouses, tools, and equipment. This section also breaks structural investment and equipment and software into two separate groups. The last section in this category is the change in inventories. This section is important to monitor. GDP takes into account all goods produced, whether they were sold or placed into inventories. If GDP is expanding and the goods being produced are purchased, it is a good sign as it shows the level of demand is keeping up with the level of supply. If inventory levels are dropping, it could mean that demand is increasing. This could be a sign that unemployment will go down. However, if inventory levels are rising, it could mean that demand for goods is dropping. This could be a sign that companies will scale back production and unemployment will increase. The third main category is net exports of goods and services. When calculating the GDP, the value of exports is added to the GDP total, while the value of imports is subtracted from it. The U.S. imports more than it exports, meaning it has a negative net export level. Therefore, the difference between the value of goods and services imported and the value exported is subtracted from the GDP total. The fact that the U.S. imports more than it exports means the level of supply produced from the companies does not meet the level of demand from consumers. The fourth category, government consumption expenditures and gross investment, is all spending and investing by federal, state, and local governments. That's the end of part one. The GDP report is continued in part two. See you then.